Yeah, that's right. We're reviewing Rapunzel again already. Or maybe we're reviewing the other movie on this daily garbage double feature disc, Goldilocks and the Three Bears. I got a bad feeling about this. Yeah, I know. A bad feeling from a Bevanfield movie. Who would have guessed? Goldilocks and the Three Bears is kind of stupid. I don't just mean Bevanfield's take on it. A lot of the time when you hear this story, it just feels like a lot of repetition and it just sort of ends without feeling like there is much of a point. Though that is mostly the fault of dilution of the story through all its different adaptations, as a lot of tellings of it don't seem to quite paint Goldilocks as the blatant antagonist. Which she is. The moral of the story is supposed to be about respecting other people's property, and I think that gets lost sometimes, but it was quite a bit clearer in earlier versions. And the earliest incarnations of the story didn't even have Goldilocks in them. There's two versions of the story which are kind of debated which came first, but one of them is Scrapefoot, where it's a fox named Scrapefoot invading the Three Bears' castle and messing up their lives. But what seems to be the more well-known earlier version was simply called The Story of the Three Bears, written by Robert Southey. The bears in this version weren't even a family, they were just three bachelor bears living it up in the woods. Clearly this was back when we all thought it was okay for bears to smoke. These bears really need a lesson from their neighbor, Smokey. Anyway, the antagonist here was a miserable old woman who the story makes very clear is horrible and that the bears are very good-natured and far too trusting. Which is why bears need to lock their doors. You never know when an evil old woman might be roaming the woods. The angry old woman apparently curses upon eating the porridge that's too cold and too hot and trying all the chairs and beds just because she's evil, I guess. And upon the bears finding her, she leaps out the window and the story leaves it ambiguous if she landed alright or broke her neck. Makes it feel a little more dangerous than just a little girl robber who gets away with it. Then there's another early edition where the evil old woman gets impaled on the steeple of St. Paul's Cathedral at the end. <laughs> okay then. Well, anyway, let's look at one of the worst adaptations of Goldilocks, courtesy of our friends at Bevanfield. Yeah, we start looking at some dirt, which is quite appropriate as the rest of the visuals are metaphorical dirt too. And after sitting on this shot of nothing for 20 seconds, we fade in and out back to the exact same shot. In the cottage lived a family of bears. Like Bevanfield's Rapunzel, we're stuck with the one narrator through the whole thing, cause we'll tell me a story. <laughs> I found out too that the narrator for these, Jeffrey Matthews, was actually Monsieur Rodin himself from Bevanfield's Beauty and the Beast and that he had been acting since at least 1950. It's just IMDB for some reason has him credited as a different person on these Tell Me a Story Bevanfield tunes. There was a father there who kept a very tidy garden. Yeah, I guess he kept it tidy as there's nothing in it but the leaves he's digging up. Oh, but suddenly he disappears and he's got a bit more going on in the garden. Now I'm just waiting for Rapunzel's mother to peer out at the garden and give the bears the look of death. On a cold spring morning, Father Bear was digging onion sets in the vegetable garden. I have made some lovely, hot, thick, bubbling porridge for our breakfast. I'll just finish digging to the end of this row. Do come and eat it, my dear, before it turns cold. Do hurry, it would be nice to have it while it is still hot. Very well, dear. I'm glad the two cartoons on here had the connecting theme of boring gardens and characters obsessed with them. 
Those are some nice yellow boots the father bear's got. Must be an ancestor of Paddington. The bears start discussing the porridge and how they'll eat said porridge and how their stupid little baby bear exists and loves playing with his Legos. And they do this while repeating the same animations over and over. After seeing stupid father bear adjust his hat nine times during this opening scene, I got slightly sick of it. The movie has barely started and the monotony's already killing me. You don't think he's a little bit too tidy? He does seem rather, well, pernickety. What do you mean by that? He's a bit of a fusspot. Fusspot? Is she trying to say she thinks her son is gay? Well, I'm sure you wouldn't tackle that one very well, Bevanfield, so you'd best shut it. He doesn't allow anyone into his playroom, and he doesn't have any friends. Oh, well, Baby Bear's just a loser, then. Maybe Baby Bear will get an unlikely human friend. No, he won't. They just brought that up for no reason. Baby Bear being a fuss pot is a very important plot point, though. Ha! 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 Said Father Bear. Ha! Uh. Uh, uh, he doesn't need friends. He's got me. You, sir, are an idiot. She wallpapered all the rooms with pretty patterns. It looks like they just filmed a rug or something. That clashes so horribly with the rest of the animation. Cool! I thought Bevanfield wouldn't come up with yet another way to make things ugly, but they sure showed me! Baby Bear also really sucks at playing Legos. He just keeps putting one piece in the same spot over and over again, which manages to disappear when they lazily re-loop the entire animation, which was already a loop. <sighs> it's probably not even Lego. It's probably... Zing... I'll just finish digging to the end of this row. Yeah, you just keep digging that hole. Let's see how low you can go. Then I'll take off my Wellington boots. Oh, thank you, Bevanfield. I was so worried we wouldn't get dialogue of the bear discussing taking his boots off. This is so damn exciting. Do we get to see said boots coming off? Oh, we do. Yay! <laughs> Very well, dear. Jolly good. Jolly good. I hate you. Baby bear? Yes, mother, said baby bear. I have made some lovely hot, thick, bubbling porridge. Some delicious porridge would be wonderful because I'm very hungry. Food is good when you're hungry. This is not only a great lesson, but super riveting. This conversation goes back and forth for two minutes straight of mother and baby bear discussing eating the porridge and him wanting to animation loop with his blocks. <sighs> this is soul killing. Oh good! Baby Bear and his bricks are falling off the background. Please just drop into the void, never to be seen again. Double whammy of animation errors in this scene as Baby Bear becomes floating detached arms. And Mother Bear put his napkin around his neck. And that's when she decided to strangle the life out of the little fuss pot. <sighs> this porridge is far too hot. <laughs> Brilliant delivery! Wow, much amaze! After every single one of the bears confirms it's too hot to eat yet, they decide to go for a walk. Let's go down to the Bluebell Wood. The porridge might be stone cold by the time we get back. Oh, did you think they'd just get up and go? Don't be silly. They have to discuss it first. We don't want the kids to be overwhelmed with so much action all at once. I'd rather go to Primrose Meadow. Primrose? I thought we got rid of her! So they discuss for over a minute where they will walk to with the baby brat threatening to burn himself if they don't go to his stupid fairy garden. If you decide to go to Bluebell Wood, I'll stay behind. And if I get hungry, I'll just have to eat my porridge whether it's cooled or not. And if I scald the inside of my mouth, it'll be your fault. It'd be nice if Brat Bear learned a lesson, but of course that'd require 
require anyone to learn anything in this, which is very anti-Bevenfield. Then they bundle up like it's freezing outside, which is kind of weird as Dummy Locks doesn't seem to think it's all that cold, but that might just be because she's become so numb. There lived in a nearby village a little girl. Yeah, we know that village. It's the exact same village as the one from Bevenfield Rapunzel. We can even see the Boring's place with that much coveted garden next door. Glad Goldilocks lives in the same town as those miserable thieves, really expanding the Bevenfield cinematic universe. And considering Goldilocks is a criminal as well, I guess they'll live in Thieves Town. She was extremely clumsy and she broke things. Ah, she's a thief and a klutz. What's not to love? And her mother grew so tired of her carelessness, she asked Goldilocks to go for a walk. Yes, her off-screen mother hates her and kicks her out. I'm assuming her mom looked a little like this. Also, this is a bit like the old woman version of the story, as she was so miserable her family kicked her out too. She noticed the pretty flowers growing by the path. I'm sure no one would notice if I picked just one or two. You'd better have a daughter to give the bears then, Goldilocks. I hear that's the going rate. She found the blossom so colorful, she soon forgot how many she had picked. She accidentally trod on a succulent mound. And she knocked over a tall tomato plant. Okay, there's being clumsy, and then there's just being a blatant jerk. And they never chastise Goldilocks for any of these horrid actions in this, which makes it all the worse. After no one dares to answer the door for Goldilocks, she does a little break and enter, even ripping off the door knocker. But it's okay, because she wrecked their garden, so it evens out. Is anyone at home? But there was no reply. Oh, bother. Unfortunately, she left dirty brown footprints as she went. Oh yeah, I feel real bad for Goldilocks as she continues to vandalize the poor bear's home. Wow, said Goldilocks. Well, at least we're getting some really brilliant dialogue here. I'm sure they won't mind if I just have an itty bitty taste. Yeah, sure, after all you've done for them, they pretty much owe it to you, right? Goldilocks first went up to the big bowl. Yeah, this porridge is too hot. She went to the middle-sized bowl. This porridge is far too cold. Well, this doesn't take a genius. So next she went to the smallest bowl. You know, these three supposedly different sized bowls all look remarkably the same. This porridge is just right. And she ate it all up. I've never really understood why the bear's porridge cooled off at such radically different speeds, but shouldn't the smallest bowl have been the coolest one and the middle one probably be the just right one? Feeling rather full, Goldilocks decided she would sit down. As she settled back, the chair tipped up and smashed to pieces on the floor. That chair could support a bear just fine, but not Goldilocks. Maybe she should lay off the porridge. Unfortunately, as she did so, she put her hand upon the house and... And she disintegrated it? Maybe it was the Lego poltergeist house. Whoops. <laughs> Oops. The little girl was by now feeling rather sleepy. Yeah, ruining people's lives does tend to tuck her you out. Unfortunately, she left horrid finger marks all across Mother Bear's nice patterned wallpaper. Nah, I'd say that one's pretty fortunate. She should get rid of that abomination wallpaper. She saw the three bears' comfy looking beds all neatly made. And you won't believe which one she finds to be just right! Guys, holy crap, it was the last one she tried! Wow, amazing! Be sure to check out Goldilocks' follow-up video, 10 Things You Never Knew About Baby Bear's Bed! It was just the right size. That's why her feet are hanging off the end. I'll get up before anyone gets back, and then no one will know that I was here. She knows she's already destroyed a bunch of stuff here. How thick is she? Then we get to see the stupid bundled up bear's walk animation loops again, but flipped horizontally. It's so new. 
I love seeing that stupid little bouncing bear now. Better get the gummy berry juice. Waiting for me to bounce? That's not how it works on humans. You go check your gummy bears, Laura. Ugh. We got completely baked out the garden. Someone has been trampling all higgledy-piggledy across my flower beds. Not all higgledy-biggledy. That's the worst way they could have done that. I will tick them off most strongly. Don't get too upset, dear. <laughs> oh yeah, home invasions are hilarious, you stupid little idiot. The door's open, said Mother Bear. Nah, <laughs> I don't think they need to worry about Baby Brat being a fuss pot. They need to worry about his narcissistic personality disorder. Mother Bear noticed the muddy footprints on her clean floor. <laughs> I'm a little psychopath! <laughs> I'm gonna kill everyone once I find out my Lego house has been banished in the void! Someone's been eating my porridge. And someone has also been bringing broken chairs back from the dead. But it's okay, because it dies again. And someone's been sitting in my chair, and they smashed it. Not so funny now, is it? Mother Bear saw the dirty finger marks on her pretty wallpaper. This is too much. <laughs> She's traumatized. Oh, that little goof Goldilocks has done it again. And someone's been sleeping in my bed and she's Goldilocks interrupting bear. She looked around and saw the three bears staring down at her. She screamed, jumped up and ran to the window. Help, help. Help, arrest me. I'm a criminal. Goldilocks then proceeds to further destroy the poor bear's home by running around in circles like a moron. Somehow even managing to damage the roof and they continue to frame this like it's not her fault, she's just clumsy. This movie is the worst and Goldilocks is pure joy poison. <laughs> Shut up! Goldilocks screwed Goldilocks, and she can look in the mirror and know that. I feel no sympathy whatsoever for Goldilocks. Really though, complete and utter destruction of the bear's property, and she receives no punishment, nor does she ever try to make things right. What a load! Mother Bear stacked her crockery, paintings, and curtains in boxes so that they couldn't be damaged again. Pretty sure items aren't invincible in boxes, even if the mail service seems to think so sometimes. And Baby Bear hid his toys in the garden. He didn't like other people playing with them. Well, others could easily play with them outside, plus the weather would probably quickly take its toll on them. But that's seriously the end. The bears are traumatized by this monster's violation of their home and ruining their stuff, and the way the movie caps it off is they act like the bears learned something. Like them being super paranoid now is a good thing? Yeah, thanks, Goldilocks, you probably just instigated the bear-human war. We all know there's really only one good way to end this tale. <laughs> so remember, if someone breaks into your house, place all your items in boxes and put those outside. They are safe there. And also, don't TRUST ANYBODY! Trust is for the bears, yo. I don't like this movie Doesn't do friendly This movie is so fake that toy is gonna break Fade us don't let me down You need to be around Grab that chocolate pizza I leave her like it cause I want Fail
Fainless Soup Fainless Bring on Mortal Comedy Fainless Soup Fainless And Animation Movie Fainless Soup Fainless What we really is so fun Fainless Soup Fainless What's your opinion about? Anyway, Thales then vanished into pure paranoia. Yes, that's right, he's not on screen now cause that's easier. And he was never happy again. But this is a happy ending, I guess. <laughs>